Hello and welcome to the Half-Life Concepts and Calculations screencast. I'm Mrs. Willie. All radionuclides un are undergoing spontaneous decay, whether it be alpha, beta, or gamma, to reach a stable nuclide. The amount of time it takes to decay is an individual characteristic. The half-life of an element is the time it takes for half of the material you started with to decay. So the symbol for half-life is T to the subscript one-half. Radioactive decay is a logarithmic function. The amount of radionuclide is inverse to the number of half-lives. Just like you learned about in pOH and pOH calculations and hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations. So the radionuclide at 100% is high, or the radioactivity is high, at zero half-lives. As I have time pass, the radioactive nuclide is releasing that radioactivity. So the radioactivity or the radiation is going down and the half-lives are increasing. So I have an inverse relationship. Carbon-14 decays into nitrogen-14 while uranium-238 decays into lead-206. The half-life of each element is constant. It's like a clock keeping perfect time, which is what makes this an individual characteristic. Carbon-14 half-life is different from uranium-238's half-life, but it is always the same for that radionuclide. So let's look at my diagram. So carbon-14 is at 100% in this diagram. I've had zero half-lives. So I have zero nitrogen-14. After one half-life, 50% of my carbon-14 has transmutated into nitrogen-14. So I have 100% of substance still there, but I have 50% radioactivity and 50% stable isotope. After two half-lives, there's 25% of carbon-14 remaining and 75% has transmuted to nitrogen-14. After three half-lives, 12.5% of carbon-14 is remaining and 87.5% has transmutated into nitrogen-14. So as you can see, you're going to get closer and closer and closer to zero radiation, but you will never reach zero radiation. So looking at this diagram, at 50%, half of the element will remain and half will have transmutated. So how much of the element remains after four half-lives? I look on the x-axis is my half-lives, on my y-axis is how much is remaining. So at one half-life, I have 50% remaining. At two half-lives, I have 25% remaining. At three half-lives, I have 12.5% remaining. So at four half-lives, I would have half of 12.5%, which is 6.25%. So 6.25% of the element remains after four half-lives in this scenario. So let's get down to the math and the formulas that you're going to use for the half-life. A, or capital A, is equal to the amount of isotope remaining. A sub naught is the initial mass of the isotope. N is equal to the number of half-lives here, not moles. And the other formula is N is equal to small t, which is the total time elapsed between the initial time and the time of the measurement, and then T subscript one half, which is the length of one half life. So let's do an example problem. Americium-241 is a radioisotope of americium with a half-life of 432.2 years. How long would it take for a 40 gram sample to decay down to three and a half grams. So I have to look, what information did they give me? They gave me half-life. They gave me uh, amount 
left amount remaining and then they gave me initial amount. So I have to find small t. So let's look at what you know our two formulas were. Our two formulas were a equals a sub naught over 2n, sorry, 2 to the power of n, and n is equal to t over t to the 1 half. So I can't solve for t with the information that they were given because I do not know n. I only know t to the 1 half. So I'm going to have to use this first formula and solve for n and then take that and substitute it into the second formula. So I know a. a is equal to 3.5 grams, which is equal to 40 divided by 2 to the power of n. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to the power of n to get that out of the denominator which then gives me 2n times 3.5 is equal to 40. I'm then going to divide by 3.5 on both sides to get n by itself. So 2 to the power of n is equal to 11.4286. So just like you learned about in pH and pOH calculations, you have to use the log to pull the n out of the exponent. So this is going to be log of 2 is equal to log of 11.4286. So again, I'm just going to use that log button on my calculator to find the log of 2. So this left side is going to be equal to n times 0 0.30103. Is equal to the log of 11.4286, which is 1.05799. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.30103 to get in by itself, which would give me. 3.51458. And for now, I'm going to keep that number long. I'm going to go ahead and clean our screen off and just keep the n so that we can substitute that into the next formula. So I'm going to put that into significant figures, which is. Uh, two decimal places because I have a 3.5 here. And so uh, that's the lower of the two. That has two sig figs. 40 had three. So I'm going to go to two decimal places because I was dealing with log functions. So this becomes 3.51. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that into my formula. So 3.51 equals t over 432.2. I'm going to multiply that on both sides to get t by itself. And that would give me a time of 1,517.02 years. In order to bring that down to uh, sig figs, I'm going to look at my measured number, which was the 432.2. That then gives me four sig figs, so this becomes t equals 1517 years would be how long it would take for that to decay down to three and a half grams. We use half-lives in carbon dating. So the radioactivity of once living things decreases at that predictable rate. 
So carbon-14 decays to nitrogen-14. It has a half-life of 5,730 years. So animals and plants stop absorbing carbon-14 when they start to decay or die. So you can calculate the age of the deceased from how much carbon-14 is left in their bodies. That's how they carbon date fossils. This was done by uh, Professor Willard Libby, who won the Nobel Prize for radiocarbon dating and figuring out that carbon-14 could date fossils. Uh, pretty cool. Thank you for listening and see you next time.